Hi everyone, my name is Betty and I am here to help you see your space through the lens of feng shui so you can make the best decision on how you interact with your space. In this video, I am going to debunk 5 feng shui myths. There are a lot of mixed messages about feng shui so I am going to tackle some of the more popular misconceptions from the least to most severe. The first myth that I want to debunk is that decluttering is feng shui. Many people misconstrued a clutter space as having bad feng shui, and you might also associate clutter with being messy. Well, decluttering your space is only fixing the problem on the surface. It does not get to the root cause of what is actually causing you to have clutter. Feng Shui is all about understanding the energetic blueprint of your space and how it influences you. Then we apply different elements found in nature to create a balance that can boost the good energy and minimize the negative energy. In Chinese metaphysics, we have five elements and they are fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. So having a clutter space may be visually unappealing, but in feng shui, we really have to look at the elements that are contained within that space. So let me demonstrate what I mean by that. In this example, this space has a lot of clutter, but notice the elements within this space. There is a wooden bookshelf, a wooden table, a paper lamp, and a lot of books. So the underlying element of this space is wood. If this room indeed needed the wood element to boost the positive energy, then they are doing it right. It doesn't matter how cluttered the space is, the wood element that is contained within this space can still do its job to promote the positive energy despite the clutter. Unless you are living like a hoarder where there is literally no room for chi to move, the normal day-to-day -day clutter is fine. You do not have to live like a minimalist to have good feng shui. Minimalism was not a concept 3,000 years ago when the Chinese first observed feng shui, so it is not something you need to be overly concerned about today. Now, I am not here to tell you not to declutter, nor am I a proponent of messy and clutter spaces. I am only drawing a distinction that decluttering by itself is not feng shui. It is merely a result of the underlying energetic blueprint of your space. I get this next misconception a lot, and that is that feng shui is synonymous with interior design. Yes, there are certainly overlaps between interior design and feng shui, such as furniture placement, color schemes, and the overall goal of trying to transform a space. But they have clear distinctions between the two roles. For example, Interior designers can help you create a coastal vibe for your space. Your feng shui consultants can tell you which area needs more water element where you can incorporate the coastal design. Your interior designer can help you curate furniture to match the aesthetic of your house. Your feng shui consultant will help you understand which directions are optimal to position your furniture in order to tap into the most auspicious energy. Your interior designer can help you define a color palette for your space, and your feng shui consultant can help you identify which colors should be dominant within each space. As you can see, interior design and feng shui can work very closely together, but their contribution and goal for the space are slightly different. The interior designer is primarily focusing on the visual and physical aesthetic of the space. Whereas in feng shui, we focus on promoting the most auspicious energy based on the energetic blueprint of your space. The next myth is that you must be seated in the command position. Many of you might be familiar with the command position. This is probably the most well-known feng shui tip out there. The principle of the command position is to give you full visibility to any commotion that is happening at the door without you having to turn or alter your position too much. Some may even say sitting at the command position allows you to seize the opportunity that is coming your way. How the command position came about 
was that feng shui masters used to travel with the military to help with strategic planning. The command position came from their efforts to select the best location to set up the military base camp, somewhere that can protect them from enemy attack. They discovered that having a tall mountain behind them made it more difficult for their enemies to sneak up upon them. And this position gave them full visibility to any enemy movement in front. Obviously, working from home or office these days is not exactly the same as fighting in a war back in the old days. You are not camping out at your office stalking every movement of your competitor across the street. If anyone were to sneak up on you, it's probably your colleague or your children. As I mentioned in my bedroom feng shui video, the command position is not always the best position because there are so many other factors to consider. If you know nothing else about feng shui, then sure, the command position is the best way to go. But since you are here, let me share a few reasons why the command position may not be the best position for your layout. This space has exposed beams, and sitting in the command position will put you directly under the cross beams, which can result in added pressure and stress. This next example shows floor to ceiling windows on two sides. The goal of the command position is to avoid surprises from behind your seat, so having windows behind you creates that exact scenario. But that doesn't mean you can't use this room just because you can't achieve the command position. In classical feng shui, I help clients to determine the best directions for their property. Depending on the property, there can be two or three auspicious directions to face. So instead of only relying on the command position alone, you have options to explore other arrangements to optimize the chi flow of your space. The next myth is to paint your front door red. This misconception came about because red is deemed as a very joyous and auspicious color in Asian culture. So many people believe that in order to bring in that good energy into your space, you have to paint the mouth of chi which is your front door, the color red, in order to usher in the auspiciousness. The truth is, some houses will actually benefit from having a red door. For others, it can actually be detrimental. As I mentioned before, each property has its own unique energetic blueprint. So some properties might need more of the fiery element by the front door. Others might need more metal or wood, or earth elements, or even water elements. It all depends on the direction that the property faces before we can determine what element is needed. Plus, energy changes every year, so it might be beneficial to have a red front door this year, but next year it might change to water, in which case you will need to paint your front door blue. Unless you are someone who wants to paint your front door every year, then it is best to keep your front door a neutral color. Lastly, I want to talk about the feng shui bakwa. It is probably the biggest misconception in the West about feng shui. You might be surprised to hear this, but this is not how I apply feng shui, nor would anyone in Asia refer to this map when you ask them what feng shui is. This bakwa is a diluted Western interpretation of what classical feng shui is. So if you want to apply this bakwa as feng shui, then it is purely for your own amusement. The real feng shui bakwa looks like this. Notice the compass in the middle. Because each feng shui chart is dictated by the facing direction of your property, this westernized bakwa assumes that everyone is facing the same direction. Or there's this other version where it tells you the compass direction, but you are still required to line up your front door to the bottom row. The problem arises when your direction does not match this map. For example, if your front door is facing east, then when applying this bakwa map and lined up to the front door, the direction outlined on the bakwa map no longer aligns with your actual direction. It can get very confusing and is completely inaccurate. The bottom line is, each space is different and we cannot use a one-size-fits-all bakwa for all of our properties. So ditch this bakwa if you have it, and if you want to apply proper feng shui to your place, you can check out the link in the description below to my free feng shui 101 masterclass. 
I hope this video helps you avoid some of the most misguided feng shui information out there and clears up any misconception about feng shui in general. See you in the next video.